Did you ever have one of those love at first sight moments? Let's get over the bench and see if this might be one of those moments. What we have here is a meter, a power meter, an SWR and power meter. And check that out. We've got forward power, reflected power. We've got a couple of different scales. We've got SWR, we've got settings, we've got a light bulb and it's a touch screen. So I can change the brightness. I can go into settings here and there's damping and there's SSB mode or not SSB mode. Let's get back out of there. Change our scale, 10 watts, 100 watts, 500 watts, one kilowatt. We'll stick on the 100 watt scale for this one. And we've got an SWR meter. Let's take a look. This is FM on 144, 425. Oh, did I mention this is 1.8 to 200 megahertz down here? Look at that. 31 watts out, pretty high reflected power. 1.8 SWR and that's on the 100 watt scale so if we do it on the 500 watt scale none of the numbers change but that's fairly obvious y'all knew that but the needles are a little bit lower because the power is a little bit lower and this should be off the scale Woo! that's a pretty quick reaction time there too that is pretty nice obviously my two meter antenna is pretty lousy but the meter is pretty good so it had an ssb mode let's put it in ssb mode and let's put the radio into ssb mode turn that volume down because we don't need to actually get any response back on this kilo mic 9 golf testing ssb kilo mic 9 golf testing single sideband km9g and you can see that we've gotten some actual, you know, response type stuff. And this seems to be more of a real time meter than a peak hold meter, because you could see that it was going up and down on the voice swings. The more voice pressure I put in, the more power you got back. Pretty sexy looking display, I think. Let's give her one more shot. Kilo Mike 9 Golf. Audio. Audio. Yep. So that shows you the conservative nature of single sideband versus the full carrier mode of FM, what we were in before. Let's switch this over to HF and take a look. I looked in the settings. I didn't see any setting for changing this over to an HF type deal. That looks good. Let's switch it over to a carrier mode to run the tuner. And I've got my ATU 100 sitting over here and it's telling me 1.17. It's good enough. Yep, still good enough. 1.17. And you guys saw this one here move up. So let's see. 105 watts. This has 103 watts. That's not too bad for comparison's sake. You guys know you're never going to find two meters that agree on anything. And the question is, which one do you trust? And realistically, the difference between, what was it, 103 and 105? Eh, it's fine. It'll be fine. But that was FM. Let's do sideband. Sideband. And we're still in sideband mode. We have some damping there, three levels of damping. Okay, let's go back. KM9G testing, one, two, three, one, two, three. Kilo Mike 9 Golf testing, one, two, three. Audio, audio. Yeah, I saw a little over 40 there on the forward scale. How's my SWR look? 1.25, 1.22, 1.23. Audio, audio. Kilo Mike 9 Golf for ID, audio. Looking pretty good, I think. The last time I brought a new meter into the world, you guys thought that it was RF noisy and that it was the meter's fault. And I really think it was the USB power supply, but I didn't get a USB power supply. I could not find any noise on it. Let's take a look at this one here on the Tiny SA and see what it has to say about noise. Right now, we've got a whole bunch of stuff going on, including the meter itself. You can see a little bit of a hump there that is minus 30. I'm sweeping from three to 30 megahertz, but I've also got a bunch of other stuff in the room. I've got charge controllers, I've got inverters, I've got big old batteries, I've got solar panels up on the roof. So there's reasons. I mean, I've even got big bright lights up there, all kinds of stuff going on. So let's turn the meter off and watch the display on the Tiny SA. I'm not seeing a change. Are you seeing a change? Turn her back on. Not seeing much of a change there. I'd say it's good. Well, you know what we have to do next? We gotta take it apart. All right, so size-wise, we appear to have picked a standard for external SWR power meters, et cetera, et cetera. And this is probably the size of one of your regular base station radios, like a 7300 or an FTDX10 or something along those lines. And the reason why I say I think we picked the standard is because this is the new one from our friends over at Gable, the RDM 1K. And this is my old standby from Nisei kind of see that they're about the same size there. The gable unit is about that much taller. 
And then we have the one that you guys like so much, the CQV SWR meter. And it is also about the same size. So if we get these guys all lined up, you can see that they're all about the same size as well. Look at that amazing camera work. But we're gonna talk about this one here in the middle to get these guys out of the way. On the back side of it, we have a little diagram that tells us what's going on. We have a DC barrel jack for power. It's about a 5525 because that's what I plugged in to make mine work. 13.8 volts, half an amp, power on off switch. And there's no battery inside, which might contribute to why it doesn't have noise because there's no battery to charge, so no battery charging circuit. And also it runs off your ham shack power supply, which you guys have already decided isn't noisy at all. Two antenna ports there, nice metal case. There's some screws on the bottom and some screws on the side. I'm gonna take these screws off of the side here and see what we come up with. My trusty screwdriver kit here. Put that back where it belongs. Try this one. All right, four screws of equal size. And we still need to take the two screws off the top. Well, she's not gonna accidentally disassemble on your workbench while you're making contacts, that's good. There we go. Oh, that's very interesting looking inside. So there is a little bit of a buck converter going on there. And then we've got our display here, Nuvoton display. Room for a battery, that's interesting. So this is probably a commonly off the, sh common, commonly. This is probably a common off the shelf display. There's an SD card there. There's some tweaking here for reverse forward one and forward two. So probably a little bit of auto detection going on there for whether you're in HF or you're in VHF. And then SWR bridge inside of a shielded can. There's a capacitor glued down there, which might also help out things a bit. So power comes from the DC barrel jack here. It runs through the buck converter. It goes up to this control board and comes back to the power switch for turning on and off. And then we've got this one here. looks like it is going to be your RF signal in from your SWR bridge right here in the back. So right there at the top of the circuit board, it says three more RF meter. And then there is our Nuvoton chip, M031FC1AE, I believe. And then down there on the display board, there is a, another Nuvoton chip, SD card, USB-C plug that's hidden inside. So they probably took some feedback from the prior art that was out there and decided not to power this thing off of battery or off of USB, but I'm sure it could be powered that way. Putting the case back on, it's ever so slightly one-sided, but it's fairly obvious when you put it on wrong because the screw holes don't line up. All right, so in the box, you get the meter itself, the RDM 1K HTL, 1.8 megahertz to 200 megahertz, nice. You also get a do-it-yourself ends of a power cord connection here. If you are gonna put power poles on these, this, this is some pretty thin wire, so cut it a little long, fold it up a couple of times, put in your power poles, and then I'd probably also add a little bit extra solder just to hold it all in place. Or you can get a pigtail with a uh, bigger wire on it. And I'll leave a link in the description down below for one of those as well. These are actually a little harder to do than the regular, you know, like 12 gauge wire or so. 12 gauge wire isn't needed, but you know, it's a little easier to work with. Maximum continuous power, 1.8 to 30 megahertz is one kilowatt. 50 megahertz is one kilowatt. 140 to 200 megahertz is one kilowatt. So it's one kilowatt across everything. And then we've got some specifications here for you. Where to plug your radio in, where to plug your antenna in, all the stuff I showed you guys. They tell you the formula for measuring forward power versus reflected power. And then all of the things on the display that we had talked about, reflected power, forward power, SWR. You can read the SWR at the place where the needles cross. And then you can read forward power on this scale and reflected power on that scale. And then the brightness adjustment. And then press to switch to SSB mode. And it doesn't really tell you why it needs to be switched to SSB mode. So we can speculate about that in the comments down below. Tolerance is plus or minus 10% at full scale. So I really like the big, easy to read display of this meter. I've had this meter for a long time and 
it's time for something new. And so I thought this one was it, the CQV meter. It looks really good, I really like it. This one does not do VHF, UHF power. So that one's kinda, eh, kinda okay. And then some of you guys have had problems with RF noise. And I still, like I said before, I still think that's being generated by the USB power supply and they stopped shipping it with a USB power supply. Well, actually, I don't know if they ever shipped it with a USB power supply. I didn't get one, but I didn't have noise in my shack with it. This one here, on the other hand, is dead sexy. This thing is gorgeous. I like it. And the display is actually the biggest of them all. You can kind of see the difference there. So if you're one of those size counts types, then this one's got the biggest display. It's got the really nice looking cross needle, set, cross needle, cross needle meter setup. So needle, that's the new way of saying cross needle meter. So uh, be sure to use that every time you're at your ham club and just look at the strange looks that they give you like you guys are giving me right now for going on this monologue. Anyway, there will be links in the description down below where you can get this meter and you will see it more in upcoming videos because I like it. So if you like watching somebody review electronics products and radio products and showing you what's new and exciting out there, then this is the channel for you. Be sure you are subscribed by hitting the subscribe button right below the video. In the meantime, there is a video right over here I think you'll enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there.